I wasn't angry or anything like that. Here we go. Oh, that's on the internet now. Whoever turns on this lesson, the first thing they're going to hear me say is, I wasn't angry or anything like that. What the heck's going on in Mr. Dewey's classroom? You only beat us to a pulp. Stop, he's insane. Oh, boy, now it's online. Frequency, uh, the unit we're looking at is distance, velocity, and acceleration. We're going to spend a chunk of time on this, probably about two months, trying to do it properly. Maybe a little shorter. I'm going to try and go quicker than I did last year. This first one ties into the unit, but then we're hardly ever going to use it again. Lesson one is on frequency. For objects that have a regularly repeated motion, each complete movement is called a period. Sorry, that's a lie. A cycle. Did that on purpose to bug Cole? No, I didn't. Let me give you an example. How many of you have been on a swing set before? Okay. One cycle would be to the top, back, and back to where you started from, to the top. So a cycle is when you get back to where you started from. Okay. The time for one cycle is called the period of the cycle. Okay. When we did the pendulum swinging back and forth, when we did that little activity, you were finding the period. Uh, if your bike tire goes around once and comes back to where it started from, if you timed how long it took to go around once, that would be the period. Oh, and the faster you go on your bike, the shorter the period for it to rotate around once. It's related to speed and all sorts of stuff. Depends on what you're talking about. There's also something called frequency. You may have heard it. Symbol for frequency is a lowercase f. Frequency is the number of cycles completed in one unit of time. Uh, how many times per second, or how many times per minute, or how many times per hour, or how in, in one unit of time. As an example, car engines have a frequency of several thousand RPM. What does RPM stand for? Who's in mechanics? Revolutions per minute. We don't use revolutions per minute in physics. Almost all of ours are going to be revolutions per second, because that's the standard unit of time in physics. But frequ that's a frequency. You call it a RPM. You call it revs. It, it's a frequency, as it turns out. Uh, old records. What are records? OK. Before MP3s, before CDs, before tapes, before 8-tracks, there was something called records. They were black. They were made out of vinyl. They used to be called 33s, 45s, or 78s. That was actually their frequency, and it depended on how big the record was. That was how fast it needed to spin for the sound to sound proper instead of the sound sounding like that. Yes. If you have an old record player and you're bored, if it has more than one speed when I was a child, it was great fun to put a 78 on and turn the speed to 33. Because you know, it would sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks. It would come out really, really, really fast. Very cool. Or you would put a 33 on, put it on 78, and it would sound like a big bass, distorted, slow-speaking person. In physics, our preferred measure of frequency is one cycle per second, not per minute, per second. And it's called a hertz. Symbol, capital H, lowercase z. You may have heard this term before. It, it's if you're into wireless or networking at all, you'll hear about megahertz and kilohertz and gigahertz. Those are various radio wave frequencies that cell phones broadcast on, that Wi-Fi broadcasts on, that cable vision broadcasts on, that satellite TV broadcasts on. They all actually purchase certain frequencies. The government, a long time ago, about 80 years ago, claimed that it owned all the frequencies in the U.S. and Canada. Any government does that. And then it sells those frequencies to telecom companies, and they pay big bucks for them. The government regulates it. It keeps gaps in between frequencies so that suddenly your cable vision, you don't suddenly hear someone's cell phone coming over your cable vision or, or things like that. So higher frequencies may be ex expressed in, uh, what do you think KHZ is? 
kilohertz. Or megahertz. I thought megahertz was when I tackle somebody at megahertz. No, that's something different. Really? I thought that was, okay. Period. Do you remember what the symbol for the period was that we used? It wasn't the P, P's taken by something else. Remember what we used in the lab? I mentioned it, but I wasn't too fussy on it. Capital letter T. Lowercase t is any old time. Capital letter T is, oh, the time to do the whole thing once. And, oh, and the period is defined as the time to complete one cycle. It says, what's the relationship between the period and the frequency? Let's suppose it takes you 10 seconds, 10 seconds to go around once. How much will you get done in one second? One tenth. One tenth. Let's suppose it takes you six seconds to go around once. How much will you get done in one second? Six. One sixth. Let's suppose it takes you 60 seconds to go around once. What will your frequency be? I, it's the same question, but now instead of giving you the definition of frequency, I'm saying, what, 1 60th? Let's suppose your period is 100 seconds. What will your frequency be? 1 over 100. The relationship between period and frequency, the period is, whoop, that's wrong. 1 over the frequency, or the frequency is 1 over the period. They're reciprocals of each other. Supposing I told you that a radio wave had a frequency of 1,000 hertz, how long does it take one wave to go? One 1,000 seconds. Not very long. That's why, by the way, when you get into megahertz and kilohertz, so a megahertz, would, that wave would take one one millionth of a second to go up and back down again. There's a reason why you can't see them. They're fast. Okay. So. Uh, FM radio is in the megahertz range. If you actually go look at radio, okay, fine. If you have an older car, it may have on the front dashboard something with buttons or knobs, and you may notice when you press certain buttons or knobs, there is a digital number that goes up or down, and it often has a decimal in it and goes up by point twos. Like that's probably FM. If all goes well, FM is measured in megahertz on the FM dial. So my favorite station is Rock 101.1. How many hertz is this? You know what? Since you have a quest on this on Tuesday, let's practice unit conversion the long way just to make sure that we can do it. We would go like this. We would start out by writing out the question. Yes? What do we want to get rid of? Megahertz better go on the bottom. What units do I want to end up in? Just plain old hertz. Uh, mega, what's that? 10 to the sixth. Where does the 10 to the sixth go? Never next to the one that already has the prefix, always next to your base unit. The frequency is 101.1 times 10 to the power sixth. Uh, I'm going to write this in scientific notation, I think. 1.101, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, times 10 to the 8th. Oh, hertz. It was, I think, yes. Check on your calculator, but I'm pretty sure. What would the period of one radio wave be at this frequency? Now, when we're talking about radio waves and hertz, we're talking about how long one wave is. 
very short. The period would be 1 over 1.011 times 10 to the 8th. Because period is the reciprocal of frequency, and frequency is the reciprocal of period. You can go from one to the other by taking the reciprocal. You guys know what reciprocal means now? You've done enough math, right? One over, flip it. Uh, so I'm going to, oh, you know what? This is one of the reasons most of your good scientific calculators actually have a reciprocal button. Mine is right there. Dunk. That's the reciprocal. I don't even have to go one divided by it. Does it for me automatically? Uh, 9.89 times 10 to the negative 9 meters long. Again, it's a very, very short wave. Uh, seconds long, sorry, not meters. Seconds. Period is, is time. Very short wave. That's how many seconds for one wave. How fast do radio waves travel? You guys know this. You may not have officially known this, but if you think about it, how fast do radio waves travel at the speed of? Sound. No, that's slow, painfully slow. Light. Speed of light. Okay. So if you're wondering how long one of these waves is, it's how fast, how far light would travel in that much time. They're not very long. Um, the longer the wave, the more distance it'll travel, the more stuff it'll go through. So, for example, the U.S. military, they own a very low frequency. You may have heard the acronym VLF, which stands for very low frequency, um, for their submarines. Those radio waves that they send out are actually about 20 or 30 feet long. You can't see them because they're at, a, they're at a, a light frequency you can't see. But they'll go through almost anything. The longer the wave, though, the less information you can transport quicker. Shorter wave, you can send way more information way faster. Wi-Fi, we like a nice, we don't care about range because we're assuming we're in the same room or close to it. We want to be able to transmit data. Uh, there's a big battle right now in the U.S. Uh, AT&T has, AT&T and I think it's Sprint, they own the best 4G frequencies for distance transmission which means they can go 4G across the U.S. faster because they don't have to put as many towers up. Verizon, I think it's Verizon, uh, they own lower frequencies, uh, sorry, they own higher frequencies, got me get it right, Mr. Dewey. They own the higher frequencies which can carry more data and give you faster 4G, but they don't travel as far, so they've got to put more towers up, so they're behind in going 4G because it's costing them more money. Once they're there in a couple of years, you'll get way better service, but right now. AT&T and the other company are doing better. Mr. Duke's Harley Davidson, I don't own a Harley in my dreams, uh, is cruising at 3,200 RPM. How many hertz is this? 3,200 cycles per minute. That's what RPM means, yes? <coughs> hertz isn't cycles per minute. Hertz is cycles per what? Unit per second in this case. So we need to get rid of minutes. Where is minutes in? Oh, this is good practice for unit conversion for your quest. Uh, where is minutes in my original fraction? On the bottom. So where do I want it in my conversion factor? On the top. And I'll put seconds down there. Uh, what is the, con oh, one minute is 60 seconds. There's my conversion factor. I don't need to go to a chart for that one. I got that one up here. I think it's going to be 3,200 divided by 60. If I'm idling at 32, or well, cruising at 3,200 RPM, what's the hertz? Uh, fit, uh, uh, let's go to three sig figs. 53.3? Okay. B, what's the period of the camshaft? Okay, little mechanics for those of you that aren't mechanically inclined. If my engine is idling at 3,200 RPM, what that means is the camshaft is rotating 3,200 times per minute or 53.3 times per second. That's the frequency. How can I find the period if I know the frequency? 
How are frequency and period related? How are frequency and period related? It's a letter word that begins with the letter R and rhymes with reciprocal and reciprocals. So I'm going to say, oh, if I know the period, the frequency, sorry, the period is going to be 1 over the frequency. If I know the frequency, period is going to be 1 over the frequency. It's going to be 1 over 53.3. Now, I'm going to write 53.3, but I was clever. I still have this number stored in my calculator. So you can either go 1 divided by answer, or you can hit your uh, reciprocal button. You either have a 1 over x or an x to the negative 1 button. Anyways, it's taking 0 0.01875 seconds for my camshaft to rotate. Ah, I'll write the whole thing. 0, 0.01875. Okay. And have you been on the revelation at Playland? Uh, that's not the period. I made that number up. I think the period is closer to six seconds, if I recall. Uh, if you take Physics 12, we do do a field trip to Playland, and we go on the rides and analyze them with all sorts of nerdy gizmos. The revelation, unfortunately, isn't free, but they give me one free ticket, and I always give it to my top Physics 12 student. What's the revelation? Which one? The big high one that spins with, a park ba with basically a swing set on the top and a swing set on the bottom. And it, that one. It's way cool. Uh, by the way, if you, uh, you'll find out I'm nuts about amusement park rides. A lot of my physics examples will look at amusement park rides because there's some great physics there. Uh, if the period is 1.8, what's the frequency? Well, frequency is 1 over the period. It's going to be 1 over 1.8. Uh, it's got a frequency of about 0.556 hertz. Period, how many seconds to go around once? Frequency, how many times you can go around in one second? Period is easier to measure. You use a stopwatch. Start, stop. You guys all found the period very nicely with the pendulum. The trick is you measure several periods and then divide by how many you've measured, and that gets rid of your reaction time pretty good. A little trick that trade. Frequency is the reciprocal of the period. Sometimes you can get it from instruments. Your cars, some cars have an RPM meter. That's a frequency meter. But most of the time, the easiest one to measure in the real world is the period, certainly on amusement park rides. How many of you used one of those ticker tape timers last year with your science 10 teacher? The one that, uh, those things? Only a couple of you? Good. So it'll be new for most of you. On Thursday, we'll be doing an activity, after your quest on Tuesday. On Thursday, we will be doing an activity where you'll, uh, learn how to use these. These are frequency timing devices. And if you get the hang of being able to read them, they give you a nice, digital is the wrong word, graphical on a piece of paper model of how motion is going on. They've been used for decades. There are fancy schmancy ways to get around it. Those of you that have Android cell phones, if you have uh, better than, I think, if you have ice cream, sandwich or jelly bean, I think there is an app that will actually let you link two cell phone cameras together so if you drop something between them, it'll start the one camera, stop the second camera, and you'll get a timing device like a photo gate. I'm looking into it and trying to find some of those things. But meanwhile, on our budget, we'll still be going fairly old school. I got a class set of these that are about 30 years old, but they still work. They were, you know, back when they used to make things so that they didn't break because we weren't a disposable society then. This is a ticker tape timer, a recording timer. So in Investigation 1-2, Thursday, you're going to use a device called a recording timer. See figure 1.3. What this is, it's a modified electric buzzer. You have a strip of ticker tape, a piece of paper, running through the guide rails like that. Let's point with my pen. So you have a, of tipper, a strip of ticker tape. If you attach something to the end of this piece of paper, like a little motorized car or a weight, if you're dropping something, uh, it'll pull the tape through. It'll pull the piece of paper through. 
it's white paper. This motor will cause this screw to vibrate up and down like a jackhammer. We put a piece of carbon paper here, which is like, is like it has black ink underneath. And what happens is every time this jackhammer taps down, it will put a little dot on the paper. The faster the paper goes, the further apart the dots. The slower the paper goes, the closer the dots are. And in fact, if you measure the distance between the dots, you can calculate the speed quite accurately. It's a nice low-tech with rulers way to measure speed without needing stopwatches and stuff. If you know the frequency of the vibration of the timer, you can figure out the period of time between the dots because period and frequency are reciprocals of each other. And if you know the distance between the dots, this will tell you how far the object attached to the tape has moved. And if you know distance and time, you can calculate speed, which you may recall from science 10. Okay. Homework, what? You got a quest coming up, study for it. Right click.